Lala Ficklin McLean, welcome. W Y L C O M E dot com. We're talking about the difference between using the preterite, preterito, versus the imperfect, imperfecto. Now we're getting into the territory, not just that one means that the action is over versus the other meaning the action, whether the action is over or not is not important. You're emphasizing the action itself. Now we're gonna get into, and I talked about this, oh, maybe about five videos ago, that there are times when the actual verb meaning changes, right? So in the preterito, the verb may mean one thing like in conocer, let's say in conocer. If you say conocia, if you use the imperfect, um, if you say te conocia, or me conocias, right? There, if you use the verb conocer in the imperfect, it means what you normally think of the verb conocer. It means to know, right? I know you, right? Not know the fact that you exist, but I know, I know you, I know her, right? Hi, I know, you know, you don't say hi, I know you, but I know you, okay. But if you say, uh, te conocí or me conociste, the, now you're using the verb conocer, but in the preterite, their conocer does not mean to know, it means meet, I met you. It's a connection there, right? There is a connection in meaning. I mean, it's not like one is a house and the other is a dog. There's a connection there, but it doesn't mean the same thing. Because sometimes using the verb in the preterito or the preterite, you, you have one meaning. And then that same verb in the imperfecto or imperfect has it might be a connected meaning, but there's a, there's a difference. And sometimes the subtle difference is all the difference. What does the French say? Viva la différence. You know, long live the difference. All right, so here we go. We're using the verb estar. Now, the verb estar is irregular in the, in the preterite. A lot of verbs that are irregular in Spanish are irregular in the preterite too. They're irregular in the past present tense. When English, that's not the case. In the present indicative, a lot most verbs are regular. It's in the um, past simple past tense or preterite. That's when they're irregular in English. In Spanish, no, in all the tenses. So estuve hablando con ella. And estaba hablando con ella. Now, in the Imperfect is what you think it means. I was talking with her. I was in the process, you know, I was in the process of speaking with her. And that's how you would normally translate. Uh, you think of the past tense, Cornelia. But if you use it in the preterite, if you use it in the preterite, it means something slightly different. You're not talking about being in the process of speaking with somebody, someone talk in the past, but you here you say, I had a talk with her. It's an, not entirely different meaning, but it's different enough to note, right? So saying that sentence in the preterite, it's more than just saying it in the past you're changing subtly, but you're changing the meaning. Estuve hablando con ella. I had a talk with her. It's not even, um, you don't even use the hablando, which is talking, right? Versus estaba hablando con ella. I was talking with her. And you're gonna find that to be true, that the imperfect is what you expect it to be in the past. It's the preterite, that the meaning changes. Cuando estuve en los Estados Unidos, blah, 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 blah. 
cuando estaba en los Estados Unidos. Now, the second one, the imperfect, is what you expect. Cuando estaba en los Estados Unidos, when I was in the United States. Okay, once again, we don't know how long, we don't know whether you're still there or not. But when I was in the United States, versus cuando estuve en los Estados Unidos, would be translated as when I visited the United States. Once again, I mean, it's not such a great difference, but if you're an interpreter or a translator, oh yeah, you better know this. You better know the difference between the verb estar when it's um, the preterite and what it means versus the verb estar when it's imperfect and what it means. Because sometimes the littlest differences is the, the uh, they are the greatest differences. You know, the littlest is the greatest. So cuando estuve is when I visited the United States versus cuando estaba is when I was in the United States. This is, this is. <laughs> okay, let's look at it. Here we go. The imperfect or conditional. Now we're talking about the verb poder. The imperfect or conditional of poder is poder is used to express possibility or suggestions. So we're talking about two verb tenses. The because you know something. Remember maybe about, five, four, about three or four cards back, videos back, we talked about how you can use them sometimes, the imperfect, the conditional, interchange, you can interchange them. You can't do that in English. So when you say podía, uh, podría comer aquí, right? You're saying perhaps or maybe I could eat here. Yes, it would be a good idea. I could eat here, right? So it's either like, yeah, I think I can. I think I could eat here. I don't think there would be any problem. So podría or podría comer aquí. Perhaps, maybe I could eat here or yeah, it'd be, yes, it would be a good idea. I could eat here. The preterite of poder. Now we're not talking about the imperfecto, we're talking about the preterite of poder is used to express something which could have happened, but didn't. Lo pudo, lo pude haber hecho. Lo pude hacer lo pude lo pude haber hecho lo pude hacer i could have done it but i didn't do it i had the opportunity but i didn't do it so you see you're talking about poder in another tense in the preterite and it has a different, once again, the meanings are connected, but one is talking about, go back, one is talking about possibility or suggestion, podía or podría, the other is talking about what could have happened in the past, but it didn't. And they both mean the same thing. Lo pude haber hecho. Lo pude hacer. Now, the preterite is lo pude hacer. I could have done it. The imperfect of poder, 
used to reproach one for something done or left done in the past. Me lo podías haber dicho ayer en vez de hoy. Me lo podías hacer, haber hecho, haber dicho ayer en vez de hoy. Podían haber ido a mi casa en un tantito más tarde. Podían haber ido a mi casa un tantito más tarde. So you could have told me yesterday instead of today. But notice that haber and that haber. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But now it's getting complicated. Me lo podías haber dicho ayer en vez de hoy. Podían haber ido a mi casa un tantito más tarde. So here, even when you're using the imperfect, because you're using the haber with it, you're talking about something that's left undone or you're reproaching someone for doing something. You know, you could have told me yesterday instead of waiting until today to tell me. Or they could have um, gone to my house a touch, much, a touch later, a little later. Okay, now it's getting a little bit more complicated. Okay, so I'm going to leave this to, 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 to lay here, not to lie here, that would be incorrect, to lay here. And I want you to think about it because remember you're studying, you're looking at a tense that has more than one, more than one meaning. I mean, you're looking at words now that their meaning changes, their meaning changes according to the tense. And that's, you got to think about that. Because how many times do we reproach someone about something they did in the past? See, that's another thing. And I remember telling my students, and I mean, I'm saying this is in English, they're all English speakers. And I'm saying this is in English. I'm saying one of the reasons you don't use the future perfect, I will have, or the conditional perfect, I would have, okay? Or even the future perfect progressive, I will have been whatever, or I would have been that's conditional perfect progressive. Is that how many times do you think like that? It's a, it's a, it's a different level of thinking. I mean, how many times do you think like that? And how many times do you think about something that will be occurring in the future, but you're acting as if the future is the past? You know, how many times do you think like that? I mean, how, in your own language, forget about, you know, um, another language. Because a lot of times, a lot of people only think in this present indicative, preterite simple past, maybe the past progressive. But when you're talking about the higher levels, such as the, the perfect tenses and the perfect progressive tenses, how many times do you talk like that? How many times do you think like that? You know, if um, Hitler, Hitler had won the war, that's a higher level of thinking because now you're thinking about what didn't happen versus thinking about what did happen. You know, Hitler, um, excuse me, Hitler lost the war. But if he had won, or if, uh, 
person X had been sitting in the other chair at the time, he would have been killed. So things like this is not just a matter of understanding what it means in Spanish, but do you understand what it means in your own language, in English? That's why I like tenses like this, because it makes you even think about your own language. One of the, one of the ways that I learned English was through French, because I had such a good French teacher. She taught us the grammar of French. And then I remember start thinking about, well, I never thought about that in English. And then I start thinking about it in English. Okay, enough of the heavy thinking. So this is Corrala Ficklin McLean. Welcome, W-Y-L-C-O-M-E. I thank you for coming to my site and um, think about subscribing. Thank you. You have a good day. I'm gonna stop sharing. And I wish you a good day, bye.